welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to the second installment in the video series I'm dubbing Avoiding the LED Graveyard. In the first uh, video we uh, put together the canopy, uh, an acrylic canopy for a client. And in this video we're going to stick together all the inner workings and show you how to assemble uh, an LED light fixture from all the uh, component parts. Uh, this is so uh, one inch by one eighth inch aluminum strapping and that's going to be used to attach the lights to. Uh, beside that is the uh, one inch angle, also one eighth inch wide. Uh, this is 50-50 LED tape, which I'm going to use for this particular uh, tank. This is the power supply and it's already been wired up. I, I wired it up earlier. Uh, I actually have to unwire it and rewire it in a few minutes when I stick it into the canopy so you get to see how that works. Uh, so it's the helping hand. I put together and that's the glue that I'm going to need in the first video so I don't need that. Uh, multimeter is always useful to make sure your connections are always good and then you need to solder. So that's my soldering gun and silicone as always to glue things together. The acrylic that's, that's sitting on was already been used in the last video to put together into the uh, canopy. And I'm not going to show you all the cutting. This is just me cutting this strapping and the angle into the right sizes and and drilling the holes. Uh, you can watch any of the other videos I put together and that will uh, show you how all that works. Um, this <laughs> is fast forward version of me assembling this now. Uh, I use the one inch angle because I want to give a, a fair amount of an air gap around all the strips. It's really not necessary I don't think because it doesn't really generate any amount of heat. But I like to be safe so the aluminum acts as a great heat sink and it should uh, keep everything nice and cool. Once I have this all tightened down, uh, silicone does not stick very well to extruded aluminum. Uh, I suspect there's some sort of lube they're using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take an old belt that I have from a belt sander and I am going to just rough up the surface. It doesn't need to be fancy, it doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to be uh, uh, give something for the silicone to adhere to. And there you go. Next, I'm going to have to uh, uh, set up the tape. So what I've done is I've pre-measured it. And actually, this particular one worked out really well. Uh, those two uh, little weld spots that you saw, or solder spots on the tape, were exactly where I needed it to be. So uh, I'm going to just heat those spots up. And when you do that, the tape just comes right apart. Unfortunately, my big hand is in the way, so you don't get to see it. Uh, you'll see some of this other soldering later on. Now all this tape comes with uh, an adhesive backing that you can use to uh, stick on stuff. Uh, when I peel this one off, <laughs> the adhesive backing actually just came right off. Uh, it's not supposed to do that, but I don't like using it anyway, so that's why we're uh, going to be uh, siliconing this. You don't have to silicone the whole thing. Uh, you can actually, if you want to waterproof it, you can just put silicone right over the top of all this. But because this is going to have a glass top on the tank and there's not really going to be any moisture near it, uh, I'm just going to stick it in spot, a sufficient number of spots to hold it in place. What I'm going to do now, uh, the reason why I put the silicone on first and then leave an extra bit of goo is the best way to make silicone stick to something is to make a little bridge. So basically it, it encompasses the entire strip and then will stick to the aluminum. And that's going to continue along here. And then I'm going to use these little uh, uh, aluminum blocks that I have just as weights to hold it down while it all dries. <laughs> I noticed it was starting to sag here and I realized I was going to have to put some uh, uh, wood underneath there, but you won't get to see that until uh, unfortunately after it sets. So that's all going to, I'm going to go do that now. There you go. <laughs> I put some wood underneath to support it while it dries. This is the next day and as you can tell, you can lift it up and it doesn't move anywhere which is really good. Now uh, when you buy uh, rolls of uh, LED tape uh, sometimes it comes with uh, one socket already on so I use that end obviously and just fired it up to show you how it works here. Now what I'm gonna have to do is uh, solder the next uh, tape to the first one. Uh, each tape when you look at it will have a positive and a negative 
And all I need to do is join the positive to the positive, negative to the negative. Uh, very simple. Uh, to give myself a little bit of added uh, electrical security, because I don't, don't think this stuff can really short out that easily or anything, but I just put a little electrical tape underneath the aluminum just to separate the tape from the aluminum. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to uh, soldering up this uh, these two points. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to separate out uh, some wires. This is just house wire that I have. And I'll just get a black and white uh, lead out of it and snip off the ends. And then what we're going to do here is uh, use the helping hand to hold it in place while my soldering gun warms up. And, oh yeah, also I'm going to put down a uh, piece of aluminum just so I don't end up melting the tape. Now I'm going to try and show you two different ways of soldering here. Uh, the first one is to use the soldering iron to uh, heat up the wire. And then once the wire is hot, uh, just touch the, uh, the solder to it and it will... Uh, melt and encompass more of the wire and also the tape. Uh, kind of a little risky I suppose with uh, plastic tape. So, uh, and also because my hand was kind of in the way and we're also far, far from, uh, so you couldn't really see what was going on. I'm going to do uh, method number two here on a spare piece of tape I have. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, what's called just tinning the wire, which is just pre-soldering it. And, uh, we're going to do that to both sides of the uh, wire and then also to those two little round dots. Whenever you uh, cut wire, uh, the LED tape, you're not going to always uh, have it nice and neat where it's at the solder points. Sometimes you're going to cut it where these round dots are. And then you need to um, tin them because I find the solder doesn't really stick that well to them initially. So it's best just to put a little extra on. And once you have this set up like this, all you need to do is position the wire over top of them and just heat it up a little bit and you've done your soldering. This shouldn't take too long. If I can get things in position. I put a little extra solder on there. You really can't tell when you're uh, looking at it with the eye because it's obviously a lot smaller than this. Um, and a piece fell off. You can see it right there underneath. But I did mose it and I will pull it out of the way before I get to the soldering. There we go. And I'll position things over top again. And then you'll see how easy this is. Hold it in place. Hold my third hand in place with my second hand. And then just touch the iron to it. And it makes a nice little blob. And they see it dry or sorry, cooling right there, and we're all set. That's as easy as that is. Much easier this way than doing it the other way with uh, uh, untinned, because again, this is plastic, right? So it's uh, um, it's harder to get it to stick to it. Now, because the wire is attached to another wire, it kept on lifting up, and I just uh, held it down with a pair of dividers I had until it dries cool sorry there you go and then that's all done and because this is a uh, just a, a socket I'm just gonna plug it in and show you it works I have no use for this at the moment but <laughs> like I said my hand was in the way for the other ones I really couldn't show you anything and there you go one important note is you know, when you're doing the soldering is always put the red to positive and black to negative uh, it won't blow up or short out or anything if you do it the other way around. Uh, it just won't work, and then you'll have to switch your wires. Uh, well, now we're back to uh, the original installation here, and I'm having trouble getting the white wire to go around <laughs> the bolt that's there, but I will eventually get it in place. Uh, because I'm using house wire here, it's always not red and black, but just always put the black on uh, your negative, and you won't have a problem messing up. It actually doesn't matter here at all, really. You can use both black wires. Just make sure one goes to positive, to the other positive, and then negative to negative. The uh, DC LED connectors that you uh, purchase when you're getting uh, the LED tape, uh, it's always red and black, and it's just always red to positive and black to negative. And I think I finally got this done here. I'm going to switch over now and attach these two wires to the other side. Uh, my intention for this video series is to uh, try a bunch of different experimentations. I'm going to try different uh, strip combinations and see how they uh, 
uh, workout and various uh, well plant growing and uh, coral growing and all sorts of things along those lines and also to see uh, uh, how the colors of the fish work out and basically to see what looks the best but for this particular video uh, I think I'm using 50-50 tape uh, it seemed to have I think the best mid-range qual uh, well, quality is actually really quite high but the uh, mid-range and the light temperature, it's uh, got to be at least uh, 6K, I suspect. It's, uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have a spectrometer, uh, so I can't really afford one either. Uh, so that's a, another reason why I'm going to be doing all the experiments later on to see how uh, these all work out. But I did pick myself up a Lux meter, and I'm going to be using that to at least do a comparison between the amount of uh, light that's being given off. And I suspect it's uh, going to be more than enough for this and for your uh, purposes. Hey, there we go. It's, and now <laughs> both sides are all lit up. And what I'm going to do now is uh, use some zip ties and just uh, secure everything in place. And I think this would be a good time to go over why I'm going with this particular design. If you uh, remember from the beginning, uh, me trying to avoid the LED graveyard, uh, those uh, LED lights that I had... Uh, well, once the power supply goes, which I suspect they're not uh, uh, giving you a sufficient amount of uh, buffer zone uh, in the wattages, you should have at least uh, 20 percent. Um, once they're gone, it's uh, it's a one-shot deal. You can't get a new uh, uh, power supply, so you're out. So what I've done here is each of these strips can be removed. Um, they're just bolted in place, and I can replace them. Uh, the, LED, the power supply can be uh, uh, removed with a simple uh, undoing a couple of zip ties. So if at any point in time any of the LED chips go or the power supply goes, uh, it's not a one-shot deal. I can just replace the bits and pieces that need to be replaced, which I think is ideal for, especially for what I do when I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of maintenance. So I have a lot of tanks, and <laughs> hey, it still works. Um, and it's a good idea for me to, you know, co save costs wherever possible while still using the best possible uh, parts available. Oh, and as promised here, <laughs> I get to take the, uh, the electrical cord apart so I can fit it into the, to the canopy through its uh, little uh, uh, hole. And uh, there's a bunch of things I suspect I'm still uh, not covering on... Um, uh, the various aspects of a, you know, putting together LEDs. Uh, I have a couple other builds I'm in the process of putting together and I plan on showing you guys uh, some different uh, configurations and showing you different types of, uh, well, well, tape for sh like the different uh, light outputs and stuff as well. And I also like to give another call out here at this point to uh, Sam at Ottawa LED because uh, none of this would be possible or <laughs> wouldn't be possible with, uh, without his help because uh, uh, he can get me all the bits and pieces that I need, and it's uh, been great. Check him out, ottawaled.com. And just put one more zip tie on here, just to uh, so I don't crimp up the wire. And uh, that, also, if you pull on the cord, you don't want it to pull it off any of the fittings. And then we're going to set it inside the acrylic canopy. You know, it looks like I'm being a little rough with this, but no, I'm being very careful because I don't want to scratch anything. <laughs> Um, I have uh, pulled off the uh, the protective coating and you'll notice uh, actually if you really notice closely this is not the same canopy as the one in, uh, in the first video I ended up needing to use that one for another job and I uh, didn't have time to uh, tape that one so I built a new one and I wanted to make sure that the uh, the joints were all good on the canopy before I assembled this, uh, so I actually had to pull off the protective coating. There you go, this is <laughs> Electrical Wiring 101. And <laughs> very straightforward. And I'm doing it all off camera, so you can't see anything anyway. Sorry about that. <laughs> that tank you see in the background is a uh, replacement I've done for a client, uh, a tank I built almost 30 years ago now. Oh God, that's a long time. Uh, it was actually a funny story because the tank itself is uh, still holding water and it's perfectly fine. Um, but the lid, which I installed at the same time, I uh, took off one day and it was just leaning against the wall and a small piece of glass <laughs> chipped off of it for no real reason. So I was suspecting, and as glass does, it got uh, quite a bit more brittle. 
And so I, because I've had him as a client forever, I said, well, don't worry, bud, I'll, uh, I'll put together a new tank for you. And that's what that is sitting back there. I'm going to do a video on that because I want to show you guys, uh, in the 175 tank, uh, gallon tank build I made, uh, because the camera was so far back, it's like the uh, soldering I did for this, uh, it was just too far away for you to see any details on how the, uh, the joints are put together. So in this particular job, I had some time, so I actually showed you uh, better camera positions. Uh, what I'm doing right here now is just putting in uh, four uh, small acrylic brackets because I want to, uh, well, when you turn this over, I don't want it to fall out. And I want to leave enough room so that when I want to, uh, say, it uh, takes something apart, it just slides right out. And that gives me the finished canopy almost. And this is where it went. And I just wanted to show you the light. <laughs> and as in all things, you figure I'd learn this lesson eventually. Uh, don't clean the aquarium before you decide you want to film it because you can see little particles floating around because I uh, wipe the glass and such. Anyway, this is the end of this video, so thank you very much for watching. As you can see, the two 50-50 tapes uh, strips give you uh, more than adequate lighting. And I'll see you in uh, the next video. Thanks again. Take care. Hey everybody, thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, please slap a like below. Or if you want to see more of this type of video or some of my other work, please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you there. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.